It's a pleasure to speak to you both. Congratulations on this film. It's brilliant. I loved it. No, so perhaps I could start with you. Ian, could you tell us a little bit about what American Star is all about? What can viewers expect when they watch this film? Oh, everything you want to look for in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> everything. Scenery, love, performances, ending. Happy, happy, sadly not. But that's another thing altogether. Photography. Photography is beautiful. It's beautiful. It's a great advert for going on hold into Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah. Music as well. The music is fabulous by Ramati. But mostly I owe it to this gentleman on my left, which is why we're together. I mean, we made a film back in uh, about seven years ago, he tells me, because that's when the kids were born. So you're obviously, you know, yeah. your twins were born. Called Hollow Point, which... Uh, was it another terrific movie? It's a Western noir movie, which sort of got lost in distribution hell in America. But we stayed friends. And he came, and about a year later, after we'd read the movie, um, he had this writer, Nacho Ferner, who had this idea for a script about a, a hitman. And Gonzalo approached me about it. And over the course of the next five years, the script matured, developed, and became something more than just that of a hitman on his mission. But developing, I mean, I know but this film is very much, the island and the scenery and everything is very much part of everything. It reminds my character, Wilson, I think, of he likes it, and he's like, and suddenly everything floods back to him as he's an older gentleman, on maybe his last mission, you never know, but he's flooded by a lot of things in his life that maybe he's missed out on. Too late to capture them, but for a brief few days, maybe he can. Well, what it would be best is it's you don't expect an action thriller, you know, like that kind of thing, you know, because maybe sometimes because of the hitman thing and the gun and things like that, maybe people go to the theater or to watch the movie with those kind of expectations. And it's a it's a slow burn. It's a it's a movie where it is important to be with a character and to understand the character and understand his situation and his personality and what's happening to him. And so the movie takes that time to reflect it in a way that makes you understand it and that you feel emotional about it. So I think that's wise if you go into the movie without any expectations and just enjoy it the it's a low ride <laughs> yeah but then, i mean i you know i i trust him as a filmmaker i mean i've seen all his earlier stuff and he's a very gifted filmmaker and that's why i wanted to do this movie with him and well you've seen it i mean you you know it's 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 a little different i mean it's it, it not it tips its cap to all those great movies of the we try to to the movie you know to the noir movies of the six the 50s 60s and 70s with the modern twist on it and a great location and a, and a terrific cast, I think, yeah. of the other, you know, the, the boy from Nora to Oscar to Adam uh, to Fanny. I mean, we got we got very lucky with the cast. And yeah, uh, yeah. I think if you obviously, you know, you've been in these tremendous action pack films, you know, like John Wick, for example, um, and this really kind of strips it back. And so what was it that you really liked about your character, Wilson? And how did you kind of prepare to play that? Because, you know, you play with kind of this quiet elegance. You play it so beautifully, really. So how did you get into that character? That's very nice of you, Don. Thank you. I, 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 I was talking to Gonzalo the last few days since we've been doing, you know, talking about the movie in, a, in an open way. And I, at the time, you know, an actor's process or whatever, I mean, I think it's incredibly boring when they talk about how they came to play the character. But I think some of my performance was informed on, on this particular film by the loss of two people very dear to me six months before I did it, my mother-in-law and my mother, who I both reached 100. My mother, and my obviously my mother close to, but my mother-in-law too, and my wife was going through her own grieving. And I think it's something came out in this, not in every way that every morning I thought about, you know, oh my God, whatever, but but it's just the naturalness and the and the and the, the scenery, the landscape, the character, the suit, everything informed the way it should be played. And it was uh yeah, so that 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 kind of was an inbuilt given. It wasn't like every day I, I had to put on a, a new a new character. It's like, you know, we had a wonderful time making it. I mean, we, we arrived on the island about five days before shooting and he, Gonzalo had been there. Obviously, he worked everything out. And then we had like five days of camera tests and makeup tests and scenery and camera tests. And then we started and we, we filmed for 25 days. And then he got on his... 
easy jet back to Madrid. I got on my easy jet back to London. And uh, I said, I don't want to see you for another month at least. <laughs> it's hard to be for the last six weeks. And here we are. You know, <laughs> Doing press. <laughs> um, Gonzalez, obviously you chose this location in Fuerteventura because of its landscape. And I think it really reflects Wilson's character as well. It's kind of, you know, bleak, otherworldly. Um, so what was your choice for filming there? And is that kind of what you wanted from, from that landscape? Well, it, it, what it happens is when you're writing a script, you find and you discover new ideas and that leads you to the next one. Uh, so uh, the beginning, the original idea of the writer of Nacho was not this object, this American star, this reflection, this mirror of the character was a different thing. And when we found uh, or discovered the, the 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 story about the American star and that was actually there in Fuerteventura, that's when we decided to move to Fuerteventura. And then when we discover, or when I discovered Fuerteventura deeply, like I went there and I started really doing a proper scouting, I realized that I don't know if it was the perfect place for it, or I was already too subjective to think that it was the perfect place, but everything started to make sense. You know, like the 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 greediness and the, the it's, it's a it's a difficult place. It could be really tough, but it's a beautiful. And I like how Wilson falls in love with it, even that some people could hate it because it's like Ryan said, it looks like Blackpool or it's just windy, <laughs> things like that. You know, but but you see how Wilson falls in love, falls in love with with the place, and I think the American Star and the island itself are really telling us something about the character. Uh, yeah. Obviously, the cast is quite small, um, which gives it that kind of intimate feel as well. So, what was it like working, especially with you know, Oscar's a little boy Max? Um, what was that like for you? Well, I left, the, you know, the casting was very much Gonzalo. I mean, I, you know, Oscar was just a natural. I mean, a natural, and he saw him and he said, you know, these, he saw about six guys. And I said, well, if, obviously, if this kid can do it, he's the one. He had that wonderful, you know, afro and that wonderful soulful look. He's an old soul, you know, and he acts the same way. Reminds me of my eldest grandson when he was around that age. He has that quality of like, you know, Show me, you know, like dead man. He's a dead man, you know, which is absolutely great. He doesn't act like a kid acting like a yeah, kid. Yeah. He's, just, he's very much himself. Adam Negatis, who was a marvelous young actor, was from uh, Chernobyl. Uh, he was a delight to work with. And um, and then Nora. Yeah, Nora came on board late because the original Spanish actress that, that, that Gonzalo had in mind for the role had to withdraw because, we, we you know, I mean, independent films are... You know, very difficult to make. I mean, I'm glad that we, you know, we, the final piece of the puzzle was when I, I brought in Michael Elliott, who I'd worked with on a on a terrific British independent movie called Jawbone with Johnny Harris and Roy Winston, a boxing movie. And Mike and I uh, became friends. And I said, "This is a movie," and he loved it. And he brought in the other investors with the Spanish investors, so we had a, a time period to make it. And that's when this actress, she obviously did. She couldn't make this time period. So Nora came in, I thought she was marvelous in it. And the great Madame Truffaut, Fanny Ardant, great iconic French actress. We were lucky to get her for, you know, for a couple of days. And uh, cast was great, yeah. yeah. And aided by the, the wonderful cinematography of Jose David Montero, you know, who he's worked with forever. And I worked with that. He would also shot uh, the hollow point. So it was a very, it was a very practical, nice shoot, five weeks. And it was it's lovely to see it up on that big screen now, you know, because I think we were very lucky with the cast because it's a it's a so a movie that it's so focused on, on Wilson, me and Maxine, that you have to be really careful about the people that it's surrounding him because it's, you know, are really key characters. But also like at at the end of the movie, I don't want to spoil it, but that was written in a way that it was not exactly for a well-known actor, well-known face. It could, you know, it was written in a way that it could have been done with a stunt double or something like that, you know, and and it was so important to protect everything around Wilson. And then when you watch the movie, it... it, it oh, you're talking about the two the people? Yeah. Yeah, no, the cow, yeah, we were like, yeah, Thomas, Thomas Frenchman, who he's working with, Thomas, you know, but Thomas is terrific. And for him... 
And uh, what's Sabelo. her name? Sabelo. Yeah, she was great. I mean, to come in and play that part, it could have been like, as he said, to, but they gave it that gravitas that you needed for that scene. You know, if you've never seen the two characters before, but you felt like they created a life, not for too long, because... <laughs> <laughs> but they... <laughs> Don't be coming back for a second film. <laughs> So, but can you talk a little bit about then sort of the filmmaking process? And obviously a lot of that, you know, the light played a real part in this. Um, so did that kind of, did that have its own challenges trying to get that? And then also the music that you use, because that's both, you know, that's kind of its own character as well with this. Well, it all, it all goes, like it's a long, long process, as I said before. And in this, to make this movie, it took seven years. So it was not like seven years every day thinking about it, but it was... It was there all the time, uh, but the last probably three, four years, it was almost every day in my head. Uh, so I talk a lot about it with with Jose David Montero, that is the director of photography, and it's someone that I work with for the last all my life, yeah. <laughs> like for the last twenty years or more. Uh, we know each other really good, and we love to think about every project in, in, in different ways and always trying to think what's the, the soul, what is what we want to tell with this story. And it's always a personal approach. You know, a different director could do it in a different way. But in in, in this case, I wanted to focus obviously on, on Wilson and the time passing around him and, and all those little details without being too obvious that, you know, what's happening around him. So. First, we wanted to, or we discovered the, the idea of, of, of pointing at, at the point of view of the character, or how I wanted to be with him all the time over the shoulder, or how I wanted to see what he sees. So that affected the camera style of the film. And then about the music, this is also something great, and that I feel thankful and grateful about it, is that I worked with Remate for the last several years, and, and I'm... Uh, I'm going to still work with him in the future. And it's the first time in my life I work with music beforehand. So I had, the, I had the music when I was scouting or when I was even shaping little things in the script. Uh, so that makes you always closer to the final product, you know, to what you are really trying to achieve. And also it it helps you because you're not having a different music in mind and then you have to change everything that you worked with before because you have a different soundtrack. I like to be... He's very organized. Consistent. <laughs> and well, it's, you know, it's, 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 but it yeah. helps enormously. I mean, you know, it's not a ramshackle show. I mean, he had an idea how he wanted to shoot the movie and I knew how I wanted to play the part and things came up all the time, obviously with the, with the added, you know, the added sort of um, cast people who came up with their ideas, which added only added to it. But there was no wasted time. There was no arguments about the script every morning. You know, it was like we got up, had breakfast, went to work, sun went down, we finished, went home, came back the next day, and uh, all the elements were there. And I think he edited. He knew what he wanted to do. There's very... There's no extra flesh on this movie, you know? Yeah. I mean, what did you cut? Maybe one scene? No. Nah. But we didn't, we, one scene was left out? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Not even was one whole scene. Oh, it, was, piece, it was just a piece, piece of the yeah. scene. Yeah. It's because in doing, making movies like this, it's not easy. And you cannot expect that you're going to get a huge budget to do something like this. So having a not huge budget or a reduced budget means that you're not going to have many days. So we end up having 25 days. Um, and somehow in my past projects, in my, I have experience um, working in really tight schedules. So that's why I became somehow organized. No, it's great because people never want to know about that. They only want to see it on the screen when they look at it. They go, they don't want to know how many days it took. But the yeah. film looks like it was, a, you know, it looks like a million. It looks like a few million dollars on the screen. I mean, you know, with the, the combination of of his shooting and Jose David's use of the camera and the light. Yeah, we're very proud of him. Yeah. yeah. And obviously, I know you produced this as well, in, which is a great choice uh, to be so collaborative with this, but were there any particular scenes that kind of stood out for you and anything both of you kind of look back and think, I feel really proud of that particular moment on screen? I, I For me, the, when I see it, I, I think that the scene which is gives me most pleasure is then the enigmatic scene with Nora and her mother. 
because that sort of grew out of, you know, a regular scene with Fanny, but what Fanny gave to it, and then the improvised scene after when they're having coffee, which is just written sort of big dance. And it sort of happened very organically. I mean, it was like, you know, Nora came up and did that stuff with Fanny and they had an instant rapport. And then Wilson is drawn in and you get that very strange scene of him dancing with her when she says, you know, about the dog. She knows he's not there for the reasons that she thinks he is. But at the same time, she's she just says the word, but don't hurt my daughter, you know, whatever. But at the same time, knowing that it's there's something else going on and never quite... And then they dance, as people do. I mean, people do, in circumstances, react in a funny way, you know. And the funny thing about that scene is the first scene of the shooting is the first thing we show because we have those that that day we have the first and second day. But it's the first day we just have the first day. So that yes, so that helped us to define the tone of 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 the shooting of the crew and everything because it was really. And the scene afterwards, for me, it's really important as well because it defines the relationship with with Wilson and 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 Gloria in the car. She hugs him, and then you see how they feel about each other. And uh, every time I see I see that scene, I well, it's an it's a sort of one of those things which I think we you know suggested is like saying, and the, the one thing you wanted to avoid, which I think we did, is any kind of strange, you know, um, relationship between Wilson and Gloria. It's just two people who, you know, maybe she misses her father. So it's something about he, he recognizes a free spirit in her, but there'd be, but it could have gone into a, some kind of, you know, icky older man, young, young girl relationship, but it's never yeah. that. Yeah. It's never, he never wanted it to be anything like no, that. No. That's yeah. not to say it's romantic, but not ro romantic in a completely different way. I mean, Nora helped us a lot with that because what she brought to the table with her character was that fresh, you know, that kind of really independent spirit that you can see. In oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, oh, Nora. <laughs> Thank you so much for speaking to me. Um, it's been such a pleasure and good luck with it all. Thank you so much.